My name is Richard Yong and I'm 60 years old. I was born in 1962 and grew up with my parents and an elder sister. I was 27 when I found out that I was adopted. So my father said to me just before he passed away that you are not uh, our biological uh, child. I was in shock. During my growing up years, there were maybe a couple of occasions that I saw my birth certificate and I asked the question, why was it that on the mother's name side, it's actually not my adopted mother's name? And I vaguely remember it was kind of just passed off and said, yeah, it was a mistake at the registrar or things like that. And I never really questioned that anymore. But it was really to hear it from my dad, that was very, I suppose, heart-wrenching yeah. for me. I did not want to immediately look for my biological parents uh, or my birth family because I want to look after my mother. So after my father passed away, and it was only through maybe a span of um, two to three years that she began to reveal each time a bit more, each time a bit more. Uh, she told me I actually came from a fairly large family and that the time when they took me, um, I really have um, a number of siblings. They came from a family with the last name or surname Wong. My name is Wong Ping Chi, but everybody calls me MC Wong. I'm 75 years old. I'm the firstborn in the Wong family. I was 14 years old when Richard was given away. So the three questions that I have growing up um, after I knew that I was adopted was who who am I? And um, why I was um, given away? And very importantly, why I was not wanted? My dad, who works as a furniture maker, uh, was burned. He was hospitalized for three months. He and my mom decided that they have to give away the baby for adoption. We couldn't afford it. That's why he was given away. I still remember the day when the lady who lives on the fourth story of our building came out and took the baby away. My mom was very tearful, I still remember. The family found it very uncomfortable that my mom would go and peep at the baby every day. So they decided that one night they quietly left the house with the baby to an unknown destination. And that was when we lost contact with our last brother. So by the time I wanted to look for my parents, uh, my birth family, I was about 48 years old. I searched for 10 years with no results. The breakthrough came on November 29, when I searched for my best friend's obituary online. The search results gave me another name, similar to my friend's, but it had a different birth year. I thought, maybe I could find my birth mother in this way. I typed in her name and added the word obituary to my search. And lo and behold, the first thing that showed up was this news cutting of an obituary of this woman, and the name matches almost entirely to that on my birth cert. That was, you know, it sends really shrills up my spine. And I scroll down. The children were all with um, uh, Wongs, okay? And it's not just one or two child, two children, but there were like eight of them. There's apprehension um, to wanting to take the next step. Why? Because um, as much as I want to, to search and find out my family, I'm not sure whether it's the same for the other parties. And especially it's such a large family. And at this advanced age, do they really need to reunite with one more sibling? We still always recall on quiet moments we think about our long lost brother. Then we are wondering, ah, what's happened to him? What is he doing now? How does he look like? How does he sound like? All these little things creeps into your mind.
My search for the rest of my family continued on social media for the next three days. It brought me results that I still find it hard to believe till today. I found the name Tom Wong in the list of siblings. He's the same Tom that I worked together with in the Air Force in the 1980s. I was working with my blood brother all this time. I found my siblings had a common link with a friend called Joseph that I knew for 36 years only to find out he was my relative. I asked Joseph to text my siblings to ask if they knew of a brother that was given away. After one and a half days, the answer finally came. Say, Richard, all my... It's quite emotional for me. He said, all my uncles and aunties are so excited about you. I think upon hearing that, I was already confident that uh, there is going to be a closure for me. There was this uh, WhatsApp messages, pictures flying around. I took a look at the pictures. I said, oh my goodness, this guy looks quite more like one of us. Wow, you don't need a DNA certificate. You don't even need a birth cert to prove. You know, the pictures tell the story. My sister can't sleep overnight. That's very really emotional. Every time I tell the story, I feel very, very happy and yet very sad. So yes, we look forward to uh, seeing him. So when I was striving to meet MC, I really do not know how do I um, start the conversation. I, I also have no idea how he would receive me. After so many years, you have a long lost brother showing up in your house. So there was a bit of anxiety there. When I was approaching his house, I actually saw him at the door, waving me, ushering me in. That was very reassuring. That was very comforting. Richard drove in, I gathered him in, and then he stepped out of the car. Then I said, now, what should I do? Should I shake his hand or should I give him a hug? So in the hand, it's quite a natural thing. We hug each other. Oh. Ah, hello. Hi. The moment I stepped into the house, they were all looking at me from head to toe and they were all, you know, all the faces were almost in shock and surprise and joy. And MC said this, said, Richard, I want to say, we are not going to sit here in the living room. We're going to move inside. This is where the Wongs would sit. So come. This is, this is actually the warmest reception that I had, had not imagined. Uh, the endorsement, it was just such welcoming gestures uh, accepting me into the family. I'm over the moon. Well, we are all over the moon after finding our long lost brother. From the oldest to the youngest, the new found brother. <laughs> if your mum was right in front of you now, what would you say to her? Hey, mother, all the one look out China, which means that we found our youngest brother, number nine. So I felt like I've been born again. Um, I, I'm able to breathe again. And I only wish that I can uh, relive this part of childhood. What is it like to be part of a big family like this? My adopted parents has given me a lot in this sacrifice for me. In the end, it was more grateful than anything. But had I been told earlier, I, I would have appreciated that a lot more. All my life, I've been known as Richard Yong. Now I'm, I'm glad to be called Gao Chai, which is the number nine son of the Wong family. <laughs>